everyone it's Danny. welcome back to my channel today I'm back with another layout for the confessions of a paper addict to design team and I am doing a scrappy Christmas in July layout today because uh, how can I not <laughs> I love Christmas and I really wanted to use some of the beautiful cut files that were released last year in the Christmas release we had heaps released so I didn't get a chance to use all the ones I wanted so I am going to be using the build a Christmas village cut file today so it comes with all the little houses and the Christmas tree I won't end up using the tree but I do use all the houses and I'm going to be scrapping this photo of myself and my husband <laughs> and our son at the Christmas parade in 2016 16, I think it was so I have cut all the houses out I think some of them I've cut twice uh, a couple of them I flipped so I flipped horizontally so they're reversed and you can see at the start I showed you my mat with all the um, like little insert uh, tiny little windows and doors and whatnot still attached um, just a tip that is a good idea if you're going to be using the cut file like this where you're doing lots and lots of these because there's lots of little doors and windows that aren't attached to anything they're just floating in the middle of the little houses and it can be a little bit confusing um, if you're going to cut a batch of them like I did uh, which ones belong on which houses and you know if you don't care if you're happy just to wing it then that's fine but um, if you're a bit pedantic like I am then it's a good idea just to keep everything on the mat still so I'm back in the cut file here I'm going to back all the doors and windows just in that uh, charcoal black paper and the rest I am going to back the the body of the house for lack of a better word the main part of the house in a certain color and then I will do the roofs and the chimneys in a uh, like alternating color and I'm going to alternate between I think I use this dark wood grain I use a red I use a couple of different greens and a craft as well to do all the houses so I'm just trying to get a mix of different colors and patterns between all the houses so that there isn't too much of one color all in one spot and that's why I laid all the houses out on that um, first bit of pattern paper that's not the one I'm going to use my for my background it was just kind of a tester um, just a, a 12 by 12 <laughs> piece of paper really just to get an idea of where I wanted to lay all those houses out just to make sure I didn't put too much of the one color in the one spot so to back these I am using the Kaiser Craft Base Coat Christmas uh, journal cards the four by six ones there's lots of really good um, like you can see there so that's all I use to back these houses with um, they're just really good solid Christmas colors and patterns okay so this is going to be the background paper and I end up using I think this is from Kaiser Craft as well I just pulled it out of my stash of background papers uh, but I think it's from a oh, it's either from memory lane I think it is from memory lane actually and it's just a soft mint with the white polka dots I thought you know just helps kind of create that uh, illusion of a snowy background even though it wasn't snowy it's the middle of summer here in my country in uh, at Christmas time so uh, but you know I still like to I still like to pretend and li live the live the fantasy of the white Christmas so I'm using here the color blast paste in bling uh, it's really nice uh, shiny metallic gold it's a bit more on the champagne side and my favorite stencil ever which is the Kaiser Croft snowy six by six stencil it's just a really kind of uh, random spotty pattern now this I'm doing here is a bit of a it was a bit of an experiment I didn't end up liking it um, so I do change it in a minute um, but I'm happy with the end result so this is my white Liquitex acrylic ink I was trying to do some big splatters with the dropper it just it looked a bit odd I, I just couldn't uh, I didn't like it so <laughs> I'm just going through now with a dry tissue and I'm just patting it and just trying to distribute the color a little bit more and it ends up in the end just looking a bit like uh, I've smushed white gesso around which you know I'm fine with um, and I will come in in a minute and do some more splatters. Um, that is the new Distress Oxide Speckled Egg. Uh, it was too close to my background color. I was just giving it a go because it's new. <laughs> um, so I do some white splatters and then I just come in with some gold as well because I did cover up a lot of those gold um, texture paste with the, the white ink. So now I'm going to make my snowy hills. So obviously I'm creating a little bit of a Christmas scene here. And this is an old, 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 over 10 years old specialty paper that I bought to use in my wedding album the very first time I started making a wedding album, which was, yeah, 10 years ago. <laughs> um, so I've used a bit of it. I ha I've had this sitting in my scraps drawer. I'm just going to use it up. It's a really good texture, actually, for snow, um, which is kind of what I was going for here. Um, but it was it's very thick and it's very textured. It's almost metallic. It actually is a little bit. It's got a pearl 
finish and it is an off-white color um, but yeah it's kind of like got that handmade paper feel it was just very very difficult to tear but uh, I got there in the end I'm just going to layer up several layers of this I'm using plenty of glue because it it's so textured it really didn't want to stick you can see here it's just lifting up so I did have to stick some heavy things on the top while I was waiting for it to dry so I do go ahead and glue these down and set it aside for a minute now I'm going to work on my uh, photo. I really don't do much at all. I just put uh, one layer of vellum and then one layer of a patterned paper. Just using my big scissors there. So this is the pattern paper I'm going to be using. A lot of these supplies are really old. I just have a bin full of Christmas themed things uh, that I couldn't even tell you where that one's from. But it's just a, an off-white background with a red kind of snowflake pattern on it. And my photo is just going to go right there and I'm just going to build this little village around it. So I am just tucking these in. I don't want them to look like they're floating so I'm tucking them in between the layers of torn paper there. Just rearranging them until I'm happy with the, the colour distribution and um, I'm trying to keep the different um, types of houses not next to each other. Now this die cut pack I'm using is a really old Rosie Studio Christmas one. I just like, I knew I had these gingerbread houses in it so that's mainly, uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to be using. The beauty of using a cut file like this is that you don't need a lot of embellishing because you've basically made handmade embellishments with the cut file. So I'm just tucking these in because, you know, they're cute and they're a little bit smaller than the cut file ones so they help to fill in some of those gaps. Now when I glue these down, I'm just gluing them down right at the base so I am going to add some foam between the layers uh, but what I'm going to do is just add the foam to the tops of the houses so that I don't have to use too much foam I don't want to add too many layers of foam so what I'm doing is just adding a bit of glue at the base of each house now when I add the foam <laughs> I don't have to add a full layer behind each layer because if you look at some of those houses I've got six houses stacked on top of each other. So if I added a full layer of foam behind each house, I will end up with five full layers of foam and what a chunky layout that would be. <laughs> so if you just glue them down right at the bottom, add a little bit of foam at the top, you're really effectively only adding one layer of foam, but it adds still plenty of dimension and it looks like there's more dimension added than there really is. So this paper that I'm cutting out I will show it to you in a minute um, I just totally forgot to uh, get on camera I was a bit all over the place filming this one actually uh, there it is there you go so I just fussy cut out a bunch of the trees off that uh, paper that's another Kaiser Craft one actually and I'm just going to use those to fill in some of the gaps and to help make everything look a bit more realistic I suppose and again I'm just gluing them down at the base and letting the top sit up free because it just helps to keep things more dimensional and not looking so flat if you don't glue down every single bit. So there we go. Just trim off those little extra bits. Go. And now I'm going to come in with that adhesive foam. So I'm just cutting little strips like this and you'll see how I'm placing them. I'm just popping them right at the very top of the houses. Just creating lots of lovely dimension and shadow. Just little strips and you can use a pair of tweezers if you find this uh, difficult. I did actually bring in a pair of tweezers and I will in just uh, just a minute. But um, I definitely like this way of doing things rather than just putting a full layer of foam behind each of those houses. It just would have been such a thick layout and I'm really trying not to use too much foam. And if I do, I just try to add it in little sections like this because it really does help to cut down a bulk and slim down your albums. There we go. And I think for this one, I will just grab my tweezers in a second because it, it really does make it easier. And I'm just using single sided adhesive foam and I'm just sticking that straight underneath the cut file and I'm not gluing it down. I don't want it all stuck down. I want it to be like you see there. When I bend it, it all pops up and there's heaps of dimension. So that is a trick for you. If you don't have to adhere it down, try to leave some pieces that are just floating because it will help add dimension. Okay, so I'm going to add my title using these little gold thickers 
and I'm just going to spell out the parade there and I was actually just auditioning this title there um, so it's a little bit crooked but I, I looked at it and I sort of thought nah, I like it it's cute I'm not going to try and make it perfectly straight so I just stuck it down and was happy with it which is rare for me actually um, <laughs> but I think it was centered enough that I was happy with it so I'm just going through some of the die cuts now I'm literally just going to use a couple of these word strips and some of those stars uh, I think any more on it just would have been overkill. It's looking, I'm really happy with how it's looking at the moment. So I'm just going to add this Tis the Season to Sparkle. And again, I'm just going to add this at a bit of an angle. So I tip that one up a little bit there and then the other one the opposite direction. I'm just going to add this little green Christmas one at the bottom of my photo. I'm going to add these stars in. I'm just trimming off that thick white border. I just wasn't, wasn't feeling it. So just put three stars just around my title there and the last thing I'm going to do is add journaling and I'm just using my Figma Micron in the 005 point tip and writing out my journaling just saying how this is one of our favorite traditions and our son loves the trucks especially the fire truck <laughs> so that is my layout finished thank you so much for joining me don't forget to check out the confessions of a paper addict Etsy store and the Facebook group the links will be in the description box below and I'll see you next time bye guys